welcome to the A Court of Silver Flames discussion. So I decided to change my location today since it's a discussion. I felt like, you know, this is a comfortable place for a discussion. If you are new to my channel, uh, my name is Sarah. I generally post book reviews and will be doing a lot of fashion content as well. And this is only like my, what is it, sixth video or something like that. So I'm still pretty new too. But if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. So this video is going to be basically just all of the thoughts I had while reading A Court of Silver Flames. If you want a spoiler-free book review, I'm going to link another video that I posted that is basically just reviewing the book without any spoilers, but this video contains a lot of spoilers. So if you haven't read it, if you don't wanna know what happens, I would recommend not watching this. So let's start off with Nesta. Obviously Nesta is a very complicated character. I think you have a lot of people who love her. And I swear, I've seen people like love her and those people are scary. I am scared of Nesta stands. They will defend her as if it was their mother. And then you have people who absolutely hate her. And then you have those who are kind of just neutral to her, I suppose, or just like, like her, but don't necessarily love or hate her. I have to admit, I started out as somebody who really, really disliked her. I think that in the first and second book, her behavior was so annoying and so ungrateful, especially to the fact that Farah did so much for them. Not only did she provide for them, go hunting for them at the age of 14, throws her behind out in the snow. Nesta wouldn't even chop some damn wood. Not only that, but she also died for the human world and for the fey world. And Nesta still has the audacity to be rude to her. So that really frustrated me because no amount of trauma could have justified that for me. And this is before she got dropped into the cauldron. This is before the war. This is before the King of Highburn. Well, in the book, we find out that, you know, her mother did play a part in this and like her frustrations with her dad. And she did feel guilty about Feyre of being the one to provide for them. And that's all fine, you know? And it's one thing to not have the ability to go out hunting, but it's another to just be plain out ungrateful. That's what I'll, I still don't understand. Why couldn't she just say a single thank you to Farah? Then in the third book, I did start liking her a little bit more. I think that, you know, she started to play more of a part, started to like act more as a family member. And in the third book, I honestly didn't hate her anymore. I started to feel neutral about her and I could start to see that, you know, there's things that are going on that she's not talking about. And then in A Court of Frost and Starlight, I wasn't really mad at her for her behavior because I could sense that, you know, she's deeply traumatized. So when I started reading A Court of Silver Flames, I was mostly just excited for her healing and her growth as a character, even though I was sad the story wasn't about Farah and Resand anymore. I'm happy to say that I do like her as a character now. I wouldn't say that she's my favorite, but I'm glad we got to see her growth, but a part of me will always just be really annoyed at how ungrateful she acted. I just can't help it. I don't know why, it just really, really bugged me. But that scene at the end, the first person she says, I love you too, is Farah. That made up for it. Oh, I'm gonna cry. That scene got to me really, really hard. That whole part where Farah was basically dying because of childbirth and Nesta, sacrifices her powers for her and for Resan and for the baby. I think that made the book. That's what made it for me. Anyways, like that was the best part of it. Next thing I want to talk about is all the Farah and Resan slander. And basically a lot of slander for on the inner circle after this book. Let's start off with Resan. A lot of people started to dislike him in this book, which I don't agree with. So basically, Rhysan, throughout the book, we see him being kind of rude to Nesta. Feyre and Rhysan make a decision to send her to train with Cassian, basically, you know, forcing her to stay in the House of Wind, taking away alcohol, taking away all the things that she was doing that were harming herself. And they made this decision basically after she spent, oh, like, a really huge pile of money one night. And this wasn't the first time, like it had been going on for a year now. Nesta had just been using their money, drinking every night, sleeping with different people, and like it or not, Nesta is still a part of the royal family. So that does 
and give a bad impression on Rhysand and Feyre as High Lord and High Lady. So obviously they're going to have to make some changes. And you have to keep in mind that this is from Nesta's point of view. So it's not going to be as lovey-dovey as Feyre's point of view. Nesta sees Rhysand as a High Lord, not as her mate or not as like the person she's in love with. And Nesta has never shown any emotion towards Rhysand, so why should he? Second of all, let's say somebody hurts my friend, hurts my family. I am going to be upset at that person. I'm going to probably be mad at that person and dislike the person because that's the type of person I am. It's going to take me a while to probably trust that person if they try to come back into my friend's life. And that's exactly what Rhysand is feeling. For years, Nesta was not cruel, but pretty mean to Farah. She left her defending her family on her own. She was never anything but rude and ungrateful. She never told Farah she loved her, never showed any kind of emotion. And even now, Farah is clearly in distress because Nesta is not healing and Nesta is unhappy. All she wants is for Nesta to, and her, like her sisters to be happy. Rhysand feels all of this because not only is he in love with her, but he is also her mate. And that's just like a whole other level of type of dedication and loyalty and love. So obviously Rhysand is going to have some trust issues when it comes to Nesta. And obviously he is going to be a tad bit angry at her because for year on end, Nesta has hurt his mate. And I completely understand his reactions because in his position, I would be rude to the person who hurt my friend or my lover. And I personally really enjoyed seeing him take on the, the role of a high lord. Even that scene where he probably did overreact a little bit when Nesta told Farah that she's going to die giving birth. First of all, Nesta told Farah not to be the one to inform her, but to hurt her. Having told her isn't necessarily bad, but the motivation for why she told Farah was what was the problem. For me personally, when Rhysan said that he would kill her if Cassian didn't take her out of the city, I'm not gonna complain about that. I will never understand the hate for Rhysan because his actions were completely normal for the situation that he was in. You have to keep in mind that he's a high lord, he has responsibilities as, well, royalty, and without all of that, we wouldn't have gotten that ending scene where he thanks her for saving Farah, and it's probably one of my favorite scenes now. Just the fact that Nesta was the one to initiate the hug made it so much better. And you have to keep in mind that even Nesta doesn't hate Rhysand throughout the book. Like, she understands why he's acting that way to her. So, if Nesta's not mad, why are you mad, you know? <laughs> As for Farah, this book made me love her even more. Farah never wants something bad to happen to anyone. Farah is loyal, she's kind, she wants the best for her family and her friends, and not once did she give up on Nesta, not once did she get mad at her. She just wanted her sister's love and her happiness. And how can you not like a character like that? I just don't understand. I think Nesta is a character a lot of people can relate to because of everything she's going through or you know just people who struggle with mental health might relate to her but for me Farah is the person I would want to be. She's the person I would look up to and in a lot of ways I relate to her more because I think just like her I'm generally a very loyal person and a person who just wants like my friends to be happy, I guess, or my parents, my, my family to be happy. So the romance portion for me was, was good. It had its moments, but it's definitely not my favorite romance, but there are a couple that I will ship that I'm happy they are together. I'm glad they're mates. They deserve it, they both do. And the ending where, you know, they were talking about getting married and having kids and Rhysand was like spoiling Nesta with gifts because they're friends now and they're family and I think it was so beautiful. My opinion of Amran and Moor didn't change. Well, Moor wasn't even in the book that much so I don't understand how people started to dislike her because she barely made an appearance, she barely did anything. And as for Amran, what she said to Nesta was harsh, it was very harsh, but it was also the truth. They they worked through it and Amran for me is like that is that very blunt friend 
that might say hurtful things but comes from the best interest it's not to like hurt you but it's to like you know make you wake up or like make you take action rather than just keep sulking and even Nesta recognized that she was using Amran to kind of defend herself from the other members of the inner circle. Let's talk about Lucian and Azrael. My two babies who have not found happiness yet but deserve it so badly. It's very complicated because the thing is I don't think Elaine should be with Azrael and I don't think Elaine should be with Lucian either or Lucian. How do you say it? I think it's Lucian but I'm gonna say Lucian because that's nicer to me. I never hated Elaine until this book because I find that the way she treats Lucian, Lucian, I don't know. Because I find that the way she treats Lucian is so rude for no reason. He is giving her all the space she wants. He is not even pushing. All he does is, you know, say hi to her or just buy her gifts for holidays and she just ignores him, can't even thank him. And I get that she doesn't want to be forced into a relationship with someone just because he's her apparently her mate but she doesn't even give him a chance she goes to Azrael because she's trying to avoid Lucian and because you know now her two sisters are with two of the bat boys and she probably wants that too and not to mention that she gave up on Nesta very easily when Nesta had always been there for Elaine. By the way, it reminds me, that's something else that pissed me off. Why did Nesta protect Elaine with her life, but not Farah? That was that was another thing that uh, I forgot to mention. That was, that was the reason why I also despised Nesta at the beginning. So a lot of people are theorizing that Gwyn is going to end up with Asriel, and I'd be okay with that. I think it'd be very cute. You know, since she's a nymph, her bones are more flexible so she could have Ill Illyrian babies and that would make more sense because Elaine doesn't have the bone structure for that. She would die and Nessa doesn't have her powers to bargain anymore so think about that. As for Tamlin, look, he made mistakes. He's not my favorite character. I really really did not like him in the second book and he doesn't deserve Farah at all but I feel very bad for him now because he lost everything. And he was just someone in love trying to protect a woman he loved. Maybe not in the best way, he made mistakes, very big mistakes, but the fact that he's lost everything now, even his best friend, makes me so sad for him and I think he deserves to find happiness. Like I don't want a whole book on him, but I would want him to find happiness. If Farah hadn't been with him, I would actually ship him with Elaine because Elaine would have been perfect for the spring court. And because she is the type who's protected, is the type who likes to be at home in her garden, and that's all Tamlin wanted. He wanted a bride that would that would let him protect her. That would just be the home wife. That would host parties, be pretty, and that's kind of what Elaine is. <laughs> so one character that I hope we find out more about is Eris. He also was one of the characters that I did not like. I don't think anybody did. And I don't think anybody expected him to have a turn. I think there's more to him than we know, than we realize. Probably same as Nesta in a way, just differently. I think for him, it's more that he was stuck in a toxic family where his father probably doesn't really care about him. Like we learn in the book that he tortured information out of his own son. Well, one of the things that people hate him the most for, or people, the characters in the book hate him the most for is the fact that he left more when she was hurt, when her father basically threw her naked to the autumn court with um, the note stabbed into her stomach or back or something like that. And Eris said that if we touch her, she's our responsibility and they just left her there to die. I think Eris did that to save her from a life in the autumn court. I don't think he did it for her to die or because he found her repulsive. I think he did it to save her in his own way. That's a theory, I don't know, but that's what I'm assuming. Okay, I think this will be the last topic because I am rambling on, but there is pregnancy. I have mixed feelings about it because on one hand, I love it. I love that we get to see a couple have a child in a book, which is rare because you know, when books end, usually it's when the couple just gets together. So in this case, we get to see them be like a family. We get to see her have a child. It's just exciting, but 
two reasons why I wouldn't have wanted it to happen now. One, because I would have loved to see the experience through Farah's eyes and Farah's point of view. Like I would have wanted to go through her pregnancy with her and Resand in the book and afterwards as well. The second reason is because I need Farah to unleash her powers. I still think she is stronger than probably all of them. Maybe not Resand because he is known as the strongest High Lord, but she has so much potential that wasn't unleashed yet, which is one disappointing thing about the, the third book, A Court of Wings and Ruins. She didn't like let go of her powers in a really spectacular way, except at the, the High Lord meeting, which was great by the way, that was like one of Chef's Kiss. I think that I really, really, really want to see a scene where we realize the possibility of, of Farah's powers and I just hope that it can still happen even if she has a kid. That's what I'm worried about. Knowing Sarah J Maas, there has to be more to it. I'm sure the child in question will probably not affect the action as much, hopefully. But on the other hand, I do think that her pregnancy was necessary to the storyline because if Farah hadn't been pregnant, she would have been the one going after the mask after the crown and the harp. She wouldn't have let Nesta or Elaine do it because that's the type of person she is. And we wouldn't have been able to see Nesta's growth. Like the ending scene wouldn't have happened. So I think it was necessary. Anyways, I could ramble on about this for hours, not nonstop, but I'm going to stop here and maybe make another video. If you guys like this, let me know if you want a part two. I could talk about some of my favorite scenes, some of my other theories and other thoughts I've had while reading this book. So I hope you enjoyed me rambling on for I don't know how long, hopefully not too long, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe and check out my TikTok and Instagram as well. Bye!